afternoon everyone, I'm Gary Martin and I'm back with Sam Sharman at Tanksley Park Golf Club where we're going to be wow. doing a bit of a club repair today aren't we? Yes, we had a member come in this morning, said that he likes to watch the channel, sorry not a member, subscriber should I say, came in this morning, said loves the channel uh, and his wife had bought him a three wood, Yeah. Uh, however she's bought him a stiff shaft and you know, due respect to the fella, he's not... Not swinging it as fast as he used to, um, and he's looking at clubbing down to a regular shaft. He so. also didn't have it in him, did he, to tell his missus she bought it wrong, wrong shaft? Club, no, <laughs> no bottle, sir. So he's, uh, he's opted for he's going to yeah. have a regular shaft, isn't he? So we've got the regular shaft all ready to go. So we're just going to talk you through, obviously, taking club to bits and putting it back together again. Yeah, I suppose we're going to salvage a few parts along the way as well, and you know, again. It's not a home video, but people have asked for this video. They're wanting to see, you know, what actually happens behind the scenes in a pro shop, and especially when it comes to sort of club repairs. I mean, you've seen where we've done the bit of let's do it at home kind of video, where I couldn't use any of my little bits and bobs, so it's going to be a breeze compared to that. I'll tag that video if you are wanting to have a go at this at home without the materials that Sam's got. But today we're going to use the obviously yeah. workshop we're going materials to use everything and, uh, and show you how much easier it is, you know, obviously with the right tools. Yeah, wham bam, thank you, my moment. We're going to have to get back in here as well, Sam. I tell you what, I have got some good bits at the minute it's for a little bit of Sam's real deal. Get in the comments, guys, if you want to see another real deal with Sam Sharman. You know, it's getting busy here, you know, at Tankersley. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we haven't had Regrets, time to record one recently, shafts, have we? But everything, constant. It's just constant. Phone does not stop. Right, let's get on with this repair. Sam, um, I'll have two, two sugars, please. Two sugars, sir, coming up. <laughs> so what are we doing? So essentially all I'm doing here is letting the heat and the steam go into the epoxy under the ferrule. It's going to save me the ferrule so I can put the original ferrule back on for the customer. And allow me to get an easier access at the head really. I think that's important guys, you know, if you've got a matching set of fairwoods or a matching set of irons, you know, to keep that ferrule. Yeah, a lot of people just burn them through and cut them off because they don't take the attention and the care, like, if I get the heat gun out now, oh yeah, ferrule's off, head's off, done, really quick, well, yeah, but it's not <laughs> going to look as good when you put it back on. Yeah, you want your original ferrule, don't you really? Yeah, your original ferrule fits flush with every golf club, unless you've got an actual ferrule Feral grind. The perfect match, yeah, I guess. You're gonna struggle. So so what happens here then? You're just letting the kettle boil out. So essentially I'm just letting the kettle boil out. I just want the steam to go into the ferrule. It's gonna break that epoxy bond so I can pull the ferrule down a touch. And then it'll give me better access for heat into the head as well to pull the shaft out in a minute that you guys yeah. will get to see. So what's the next step? So essentially all I'm gonna do in a second, when it's finished on the heat, is pull it off. Um, obviously dry it down and then I've got a little bit of a plastic clamp that I'm just going to use to pull the ferrule. That's what she said. <laughs> so as I'm there, I'm going to dry it to give myself a little bit of leverage. Nice and hot. Here guys, feel that. Ooh. <laughs> so, plastic clamp. All I'm then going to want to do is get that to grip nicely and pull the ferrule down a touch. Has it come down? Which, as so, it's doing nicely. That's fantastic. Just going to do it nice and steady, though, because I want to stretch it. Yeah. If you guys pull it really far down, you've got to remember that the plastic's hot here. Yeah. So if I pull it far down, it's essentially going to make a little Can hole. Can you just big show them that gap that you've created? So, you pull... so the gap I pulled there yeah. is essentially going to give me space now to fire the heat gun down here yeah. and just let me pull it off nice and clean. What a subscriber mentioned to me, Sam, is if you've not got a clamp at home, you can use an old grip. Yeah, you old could, grip. I've got them in this drawer. I use grip. little bits and bats. Yeah. That was very, very easy for the camera. It can be an absolute nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> that was showbiz at finest. So. I'm going to put the camera down just so I can get in short. Yeah. So, essentially now, I've got it in my shaft extractor. I'm going to put the shaft in the plastic, and I'm going to make sure the head's always pointing to the sky. This will then be obviously not going to damage it. <laughs> I've got three different settings that I can have on the end. So I'll test all three to see which one I think is going to be best. Personally, here, number two, just to allow me to have the closest fit and the most pressure when I need it. So all I'm going to do now is tighten the shaft in first. Nice and tight. Make sure that you're not going anywhere. Could you over tighten that and break the shaft? Absolutely. You've got to have a very good hand and know <laughs> where you're good stopping. Judgment. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is tighten up so then I can feel a little bit of give. I can feel that that's not moving as much now. So that's now pulling, is it? Yeah, so pulling that's pulling the head off the shaft. Right. So all I'm going to do now is obviously with the gap I've created with the ferrule, 
is let some heat down it and the head should move off nice and steadily. So every five to ten seconds I will start to crank the head to put a little bit more pressure. Yeah. In something like this, this is a 9045 wood, something like that. So it's 17 years old? Yeah. 16 years old? So there's no twisting of the shaft here, it's just pulling straight off. It's pulling it? straight off, my friend. It's a perfect removal. How much are these shaft extractors? Are they. 59 was the really? last one we bought. They may have gone up now, but that's what we paid for this last year. So they're not way out there, are they? You know, you no. can afford to buy one. You're going to do a lot of these sort of repairs. So the shaft started giving way here now. So I'm going to take it off the heat. If I carry on the heat, it's going to melt the graphite. So, so you guys can see, I'm just going to hold the top of the head. Don't touch where it's hot. Reeling it with a very sore set of fingers. And all I'm doing now is essentially relieving the head from the shaft all the way down. Tell you what, go a long way down in these yeah, darts, don't do, we? Know wow, they. lovely that. Perfect stuff. So, we're all the way through. So, what's the next step? So, sort of prep the head and shaft, don't we? Yeah. So now, essentially, what I want to do is I want to get all the old epoxy out of the head. So I'm just going to drill that out by hand. Tap that out and there's a load of old epoxy come out there. That's lovely. So I also do have little Dremel brushes and things like that. Dremel brushes. You know, pedantic. Do you know where everything is? No. <laughs> there we are, look at them ones. That is what I want. You wanted. knew were in that chest somewhere, didn't you? I mean, I'd got 19 drawers to find it and it was in 19 and 20. Yeah. It just shows you how much easier it is when you've got the tools, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you'd be waiting ages, wouldn't you? Would you say these are sort of household essentials? Or I, I don't have a Dremel, but... Uh, I just literally... This is a brand new one, but all this is going to do is make it dead clean. Dead clean. Perfect. Happy with that? Yeah, more than happy. And now we do a bit of shaft prep. So sometimes when you're doing shaft repairs in pro shops, you run into problems and we've run into one. And that's because Sam's repairing a club that came out in 2008 and Sam were only eight year old when this club come out. Yeah, we've not done many of these and it's been a while ago since I did. So we've had a little problem of just chamfering the shaft, which has been done now. I'm just making sure it gets flush enough for me. If you're not sure what chamfering the shaft means, you won't have to do this very often with shaft repairs, but the Near or never. It basically comes. It goes straight through, doesn't it? Yeah, I'll give it in a second. I'm just we'll, going to make we'll show sure you in a second. Mm, not quite you quite. might have seen these on some of the old Callaway irons. You know, the yeah, Callaway did a set of irons that were an absolute. You know what to fix. Yeah. So, I'll take that off here. So you might be able to see here that it goes straight through. All right. So when it comes out the shaft at the bottom, you've got to then you know make it flush to the. The club, so you've had to shape it, haven't you? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just anal. I'll just, just show you the old shaft. That was what we've took took off. So you see how it's it's been cut so that it fits flush. It fits flush when it's glued like that. So we just had to do that little bit of extra prep, which you won't have to do very often. And the head may not shaft. You need the head, don't you? So, so all I've done there. For any of you that were in is line the adapter up. It's got a serial number on the adapter and I've just, uh, on the ferrule, and I've just lined it back up into the head. So, we are nice and flush. As far as preparation a shaft, you yeah. obviously, you've... All I'm going to do now is give it a quick go on the grinder, get the last bit of lacquer off the shaft, 
then we'll rock and roll and glue her. And that's just so it glues better, you know, if you don't yeah, just remove the, the shaft right, because obviously this was a brand new shaft that Sam's fitting and there was lacquer on it, so there were paints on it. And if you were going to try this at home, I'll tag the video where we did this using home Yeah, we materials. did this using home gloves, not quite to this extent, because they've got a bit of a treat here, really, with yeah. doing what we're doing. But in the other video, we showed you how to prep the shaft, you know, for somebody that's new to doing repairs. Absolutely. Where obviously, Sam being professional doesn't need to do as much prep, because it's something that he does that is every day for a living. So, let's get some glue, and we're going to glue together. So yeah. all I've got now is a decent two-part epoxy in a 50-50 mix-up. We're going to glue the head together with the shaft. When I can get the lid off. I think it's probably good to see this bit, guys, because, you know, I see a lot of people do this wrong because the ferrule always comes loose, doesn't it? Ferrule you, always comes Have you seen that? I mean, I see it more personally with irons. Very, very rarely with buds. Yeah. Because what I've done as I've put my ferrule on is I've chucked a little bit of glue underneath it. Yeah. Just with a little bit of quick prep. You know, Why do people... I think people forget to do that, though, Sam, honestly. I think people put a little bit of glue on the end of it. Yeah, but it's but they don't stick, put it underneath. It? You've got to put it underneath the ferrule, slide the ferrule down, and then obviously yeah. mop up your spillage. So all I've done there, mixed two-part epoxy, nice and mixed. So all I'm going to do now is put a little bit inside the head. Get it nice and mixed around the edges. You'd think this would be idiot proof, guys, but. Um, Especially with it being the double ended sword. Yeah. This is harder than it looks, unfortunately. And I think it's really important to show these guys, you know, how to get that ferrule, you know, nice and flush and finish it off well. So, I'm happy with the amount of glue I've put inside the head. I've spread it all the way around. I'm now going to put some on the shaft on the end of the shaft. So, as I've prepped, I'm literally just going to wipe it up and down the shaft all the way around. Get it all off the different sides of the T. Again, people use all sorts of different weapons. T is my choice, always has been. It's personal preference. So I'm just going to stick a little bit more around this top side just to make sure that the glue glides over anything that it needs to. And we're going to rock and roll. So, again, both sides are prepped. All I'm going to do now is slide it over. I'm going to get a little bit of a napkin on the floor, just in case any glue comes out. And all I'm looking for now is essentially it coming level on the other side. Yeah. In this case, I want to keep my graphics very square. But obviously, I'm going to get to see this when the, uh, the glue comes out. So as I'm going in there, glue's coming out all over my hands. But I'm lined up and I'm in. So all I'm doing there is wiping that excess glue away from the bottom of the head. You wouldn't have to do this for a normal reshaft. And I'm going to do the same around the ferrule now. But if you can see that. Yeah. With my ferrule being flush, because I've measured it well, it's a nice easy fix. However, all I'm going to do now is just check the graphics, because my graphics are lined up for the shaft chamfer. And you glued that ferrule on prior, didn't you? Yeah. You, know, you obviously measured just it out. Just stuck a little bit of glue on as you I was doing it, yeah. some glue on and had it in position. Well, when you saw me tapping it down at the start of the start of the clip. Yeah. Perfecto. So, like we say, guys, shaft's nice and chamfered. The graphics and the alignment is straight down the shaft. We can see that. So all I'm going to do now is wait for it to dry a little bit and then we're going to cover this little shaft exposure with a melted ferrule and create that plastic finish in the cover. Putting up a bit of a fight, Sam. A lot of a fight. We're nearly there though, we're winning now. Right, rocking and rolling, are we ready? We're rolling. We're going. 
rock and roll it all in there. I'm just going to fill that gap, that hole. There'll be somebody watching this who's probably done this reshaft and wondering, you know, why they've got a hole. <laughs> yeah. And how to fill what it. What have I done here? And we've just basically melted a ferrule to fill it. And then pressing it in where it's down the knife. Very good. And then what's the final prep? Essentially all I'm going to do is sand it down. Sand it down. We'll show you this finish, guys. In two minutes. And there we have it. We're in. We're done. We've melted. We've we managed it. to melt it in. So, yeah. We're you, all in. You flushed it off with the Stanley knife, didn't flushed you? Flushed off with the Stanley. As you can see, love a little job with the original adapter. Oh, that's flush, guys. No, start again, ferrule. Let's what did I say, adapter? Adapter, yeah. <laughs> and there we are. That's the finished job. So we've got the, uh, what would you call that? The plug. Yeah, the plug. Which you've done. You know, obviously, you know, we don't have these parts anymore, do we? No, it's something I've not done in a long time. So we've melted a ferrule down to fill the hole, flushed it off with a Stanley knife and a bit of white spirit to clean it up. And uh, we managed to salvage the ferrule as well. Yes, yeah, so the original ferrule's back on with its original serial number and it's flush. So, good job, another happy customer. And we've done that using workshop materials. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to do that at home, I don't think. I think that'd be too... It is probably a bit too far to do at home. But if you do want to see how to do... You could do a normal shaft from home, couldn't you? Yeah. Which... Um, we've done the video on. We've done the video on. So if you want to see that, you know, how to prepare the shaft. I didn't feel like we showed much about preparation on this shaft. I think we've done a lot with that before, though. We've had custom shafts and guys that have watched that. I mean, I've done at least... I did the uh, even flow shaft, the yeah. custom one for a customer. But I think what yeah. you probably have seen today is, is using a shaft puller. Yeah, something different for the guys as well, yeah. And how easy, you know, it is to remove a shaft with the right tools. Yeah, absolutely. You know, without damaging it as well. So I hope you've enjoyed that one, guys. You know, that were a tricky one today. We weren't expecting that, were we? No, I mean, being blase, I didn't even notice until I took the shaft out and went, ah, oh, I can see through that. <laughs> so the guy has got an absolute bargain here. £40 is paid for a new shaft, fitted. And I guess now you're going to put him a grip on, aren't you? I'm going to put him a grip on. An absolute steal. I hope you've enjoyed that one, guys. We'll be um, back again soon. We're going to be getting back in here. Sam's got a lot of second-hand stuff building. So if you're in the market for some new gear, or, you know, some second-hand gear, a bargain, we know where to be. we'll get back down and see you. So I might Love come it. down and see you Friday, actually. Friday afternoon, can if you with can that. make a bit can of time. With that Is that all right? Absolutely. So keep an eye out for that one, guys. We'll get back down here and see what Sam's got on sale. And uh, hopefully help you guys get sorted for the season. See you soon. See you later, guys. Bye. I tell you what, it's not far.